than to be on low ground. Pressure for an advantage whenever, whenever we should. Right, you have a guy on high ground. They blow Suzu for some reason. Like when I talked all. So this guy just blew. So. Okay, so here's the deal. <clears throat> um. I, I'm not, I don't really believe, at least the goal for me, this review right now, is not to focus so much on your game knowledge as a coach. I think that's something that's like going to get better with time and is probably good enough as it is. In fact, I don't even think it's necessarily a priority. However, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm seeing right now, we're at like the 51 minute mark on a 10 minute map on a review. And if this is, is this approximately similarly timed to most of your reviews about an hour? Is that generally how long yeah. these reviews go? Yeah. It's too, to too much. Too much. Okay. Really, truly too much. Yeah. Um, especially for a team that's like not used to doing reviews like this. So let me give you kind of like a little bit of insight as to what London was doing. Because I think London was doing it relatively well. Usually two scrim blocks and then we'd have one, and a half, one hour and a half review total per day. Usually it would only be about um, that. Um, actually, I don't even know. It was more like 45 minutes to an hour total for the day. Um, and that was usually a variety of team stamps, uh, time stamps, excuse me, uh, a variety of time stamps from a lot of different maps, usually with like one or two concepts, like a consistent theme throughout. This is, I'm going to be honest with you, it's boring. It's real boring. You could be, it's not even, this is not even necessarily an attack on your speaking pattern or how you communicate or how you coach like you got a lot of things going for you but it's like it doesn't matter because this is a 51 minute review on a collegiate team that's scrimming three times per week the thing is is like you have to understand that when it comes to like review and then like actually practicing review should always be like in the minor in the, like in the significant minority in other words if i'm looking at to review this right and my goal here is to we want to, i want to review let's let's go back to what you're saying i want to review our general fight positioning and angles my goal and this is, might shock you my goal would be to pre simply prepare and put out a review that's under 20 minutes long that's only focused on positioning and angles that doesn't talk about the ults that doesn't talk about um the communication that doesn't talk about this maybe even skips uh like half the fights where i think our angles were either not terribly bad or not terribly good and all i'm doing is i'm looking at fights where our angles were really really bad or really good and and i'm going to either highlight the really bad ones as being like these are the adjustments that we need to make this is what we need to change here like for, for example if you want to talk about the first fight okay so first fight we're talking about um guys here's what we're going to do we're going to talk about angles we're going to talk about looking at our map control these are concepts that you guys know really important when it comes to the way we play the game so all we're going to do is we're going to look at this spot review find examples where angles are really good and angles where we, they were really bad so i think first fight here uh i'm just going to try and like mirror as best as i can what you were doing uh first fight here i'm gonna i want us to try and consider is there any role out here that we could do where we could get control of this flank on the left here i was thinking perhaps our lucio could start by speeding our core and then our lucio actually uh escorts our sojourn up to this control here because as we as we talked about if we can get a cross high fire from two different angles we get control of statue um and what that could do is that allows our lucio to kind of support the sojourn uh because we probably don't need speed on main initially so i want us to try this one out on first fight okay uh and then one example of us i think is really doing a good job here is, is i think that we did a great i'm just making this up i think we did a really great job as like pushing robot initially and then but not just all stacking on robot obviously this flank on the right side here might be a little bit tricky so what we were able to do i think aman you did a great job as controlling this far left through the mega while we were pushing on main i want to see more of that like let's continue to be uh, uh leveraging that um that was really really nicely done on this map and then i think as we turn the corner here so this is obviously a situation where we're now on the defensive aman i this angle is really good for you but my concern here is that you're too isolatable um, my question here is is it possible that we could kind of utilize where deadlocked his position here aman could you play where a torb is and try and flank through this window here with on a pocket i mean it's not as good of a sight line but it also means that you're less exposed i think this is something that we can possibly try in our next scrum uh and then I was thinking when we do the exact same thing again, if there's a situation where we want, really want to clutch, or maybe we've got Torbal, maybe we actually flip-flop, so then actually our Torb is flanking through behind instead. So whereas before we had Amon, you were here, maybe if we've got like Torbal and we want to like explode through the back line, maybe actually Torb and Sojourn can utilize this angle. Uh, and But then I really want to highlight like this point right now, like obviously it's really difficult because we're having to go uphill, uh, but I really, really like that we're just not all stacking here, right? Obviously this high ground is really, really risky, so maybe if we can set up Amon in this angle here, 
I think that's what we were trying to do here, and I think that's exactly what we need to be doing here. So overall, I think this map was really, really good. Some opportunities that some adjustments that we need to make. Remember, first fight, we need to practice that first fight rollout. But for the most part, I think Amani doing a great job with the offense that we're taking. Uh, let's move on to Coliseo. Do you kind of see what I'm saying? Um, yeah. that's the kind of speed and energy and, and it's even better if you can ask questions so for example if I see where like if we go to first fight and I think that there's a real low hanging fruit here and I'm like alright guys this is not the offing setup that we want what do you guys think are, are there any setups that we could do better do you guys have any ideas for setups and what you do is you open the floor for them to kind of come up with a couple of ideas and oftentimes, and this is like legitimately um, they will come up with a couple of ideas that might be better than yours, especially if they've been in your system for a little while. They kind of understand the game. And so they could be thinking, okay, what can I do? What can I do here? What can I do here? Like, what if what if we did like Torb roll out here? Because Torb's got more sustain than, than Sojourn, right? So maybe it's like Torb rolls out here, you know? Um, and it's just like Lucio or Matra here. I, I, you know, right? Like maybe they'll come up with an idea or two that you wouldn't have otherwise come up with. And when you ask questions, you get their engagement. Um, but regardless of whether it's more of a presentation monologue or whether it's more of a discussion base, I think having a mixture of both is really good. You could teach and then you can discuss. I think that's a good balance. Uh, the length is just a huge, huge barrier here because honest question for you, when you went through this review, um, were you consistently just talking about controlling of off angles or did, were, there, were there a lot of different topics that you kind of touched on as you saw them through the review? So the way I structure it, I do try to have a theme. Right? I, I say, hey, this is the priority awesome. in, the, awesome. in the beginning, and I try to make everything consistent and keep right. my terminology consistent so that we're not chasing squirrels. Perfect. Right? Like, yeah, it's Perfect. Like, the theme of this is uh, everywhere I can see off angles, I draw the off angles. Perfect. If I see something pop up, I go, hey, by the way, a little side detour. It's, it's like a you know tree with branches, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Kind of tree, but I go here, like, hey, this here, a little bit of a, a wonky. Um, like in you know, one one of these cases, like hey man, like you you can get off the bot, right? You don't you don't have to stay on the bot. Take right, cover, right. Just, uh, play your player health. Right. And then we go back to angles after that. Okay, so, so so perfect. So you already have the right idea with how to do it. It just comes to it's it's like your 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 goal with the review is good. It's just how it's being done is not good. Um, I wouldn't say it's bad. I mean, this isn't a bad bot review. I think that's a really disingenuous thing to say. I just think it could be delivered so much better. It's like again, it's like um. It all comes back down to like your expectations. Like I, I think that a review 50 minutes on one map is probably pushing it for anybody, um, but it's especially pushing it for like 4.2K collegiate players that scrim three or four times a week. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I want you to, I think the best thing that you could probably do is do what you're doing right now, which is like having these themed VOD reviews. I think that's excellent, right? That you definitely have the right idea with that, but do it in a way that keeps the, the, their attention more and has something that's more directly memorable and tangible at the end because the problem is that it's not oh that you're catering to a lower attention span the problem is that there's probably so much information so many little adjustments and off angles and little things to remember that by the time you get to the end much less the next map it's just difficult to remember it all even if you are paying attention um i know that this is something this is something that i, I i've personally struggled with a lot right is is sometimes like even if you're fully engaged there's just so many little details that i have to kind of remember that when i go into that next map which you talked about we want to make those adjustments for next map no wasted time i, I love that phrase but i've got I'm, I'm trying to remember everything you know what i'm saying and so what ends up happening is i might not be able to get everything done i might not be fully focused on what i'm getting done and i think that's kind of what the goal needs to be is like if we can say first fight rollout i'm on we gave you some ideas some some better off angles uh platypus i really liked your off angles always like if you can get an opportunity to praise good execution that's as to me that's as valuable as uh chastising bad execution right so they know okay that was great i'm gonna do that again you know what i'm saying Con like you want to give positive reinforcement when they're doing the things that they ought to do if you could just bang 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 five or six examples as quickly as you can as efficiently as you can then I think that's going to have a more tangible and more memorable impact that's going to transition uh, or, or I guess lead into a, a better performance in the scrim afterwards, if that makes any sense. Um, and that also makes the frequency of the VOD reviews less of a problem as well, where you're able to make quick, immediate adjustments because those adjustments are so, so simple, right? We don't have to worry about is this information all being processed if this is an 18 minute VOD review with only three or four total things uh, on a couple of maps that we need to execute on. Um, 
And then the way you could do it as well is you could go, okay, so these are the things we're gonna do, the first fight adjustment, you know, la, 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 la. And then you guys play New Queen Street again, right? You sent me the replay code. Let's go back and look at that for that, that, that New Queen Street again in the next VOD review. Let's devote three or four minutes to the next VOD review and be like, all right, guys, this is what we were trying to work on. How did we do? It's like, it's exactly like what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about like the overcoaching thing, like knowing, like putting realistic expectations, not trying to do too much, not trying to cram. To me, this is the same kind of thing where you're like, the more I talk, the more I coach, the longer the VOD review, the better it is. But it actually, it's just the opposite. Like it really, truly like what we have here is like, is a three minute VOD review helpful? Yes. Is a 10 minute VOD review better? Yes. 50 minute VOD review? Yes. 20 minute VOD review? Usually 25 minute VOD review? Probably 30 minute VOD review? Uh, depends, right? And it, it's like the bell curve, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so here I'd say, hey, this is looking pretty good. I yeah. talked a lot to Enigma about turret placement. Like I, I told him I don't want him on top of his turret. I want yeah. the turret in the six man, right? I want the yeah. turret on an off angle. Yeah. So like this, I like this, I like this. I like this. Like so far, you know, and yeah. they're clumped up. Like usually yeah. I would look at this and go, hey, this is pretty good. You know, the I, only I, thing I, I, I Yeah, the only thing I would might say is, hey, Lucio, you, you can now that uh, you know that five guys are in front of you, so this guy's not getting flanked, you can actually press up a little bit and look for a boop, right? You can yeah. Like, yeah. And try to keep people off because uh, he's safer now, and if at any point he's not safe, you can always back up. So here's a great little bit of feedback for you for what you just said. So you're right, but this would be something that we would have to be very careful to say in a team bot review. Because the problem with what you just said is if I'm not a Lucio player, I just tuned out. You kind of see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying never, ever bring up individual things in VOD reviews. I think that that is going to happen. It has to happen. It's stupid to try and avoid that. But you need to be careful about how often that happens. And that's why things like the individual VOD reviews, if you were to find time for it, um, heck, even just not doing one fewer team VOD review and spending that time with individual feedback, like 20 minute VOD reviews with a couple of players might be more impactful because if you're sitting in a voice with me and I'm the Lucio player and you're talking to me about my Lucio play, my Lucio positioning, and you bringing up seven or eight timestamps, I'm fully engaged on that because you're freaking talking to me about my gameplay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think like, that's why I think individual VOD reviews are important is because it's, it's the best way to make sure that that player is like actually truly listening because you're working with them one on one. Um, so I used to do shorter VOD reviews, right? I used uh -huh. to do, um, and I still do some of them, like exactly what you said, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just pop around. Uh -huh. And I felt like I wasn't catching enough of the, because I, I, in an ideal world, I do that as a team and then I go around to individuals. Uh, but that would require me to go around like the same scrim like five times, right? And then I just realized I didn't have, I, I don't get paid to do this, by the way. So right. I just realized I don't have time to do that. So that started moving into where I have a cat, a more catch-all system. So that's why I started inflating my vlog reviews right where like i have an hour and i will do everything i will pick out like i will have a theme i will structure but yeah. if i need to go to individuals i'll, I'll just do it all in one place and i say hey if it doesn't apply to you just skip for it right um, we're, right we're gonna watch it back and like i i know it's i wish like I'm, I'm aware of this but i don't know how else i could fix this because it would require way more time than i think i currently then you know, I then don't have. worry about then don't worry about it let the lucio thing fly like really truly like, again, it's about the lowest hanging fruit. Like, what's the most important thing right now? You're Lucio getting that slightly annoying boop, uh, something that he'll probably figure out over time as he plays the, the situation more and more often. Or is it going to be making sure that this rollout happens right? The turret placement, the angles, that that's it. Like, get that done. Or And, and for example, like you talked about, like, we haven't even talked about old economy. Well, in my opinion, I think finding out how you want to use ultimates and, and fight planning, I think is as important, if not even more important than controlling off angles and positioning. And so that's the other danger you run into when you get into the, this micro specific stuff, not micro, I guess, macro, but just like staying on the same thing going on so long is that you're never going to be pleased with the end result. Like I could be honestly, the best Overwatch League team in the world scuffs up off angles at least once per map. You know what I'm saying? So if you're like aiming for perfection or aiming for even significant improvement, it, I think you're going to be disappointed and you're going to keep hitting your head against the wall. Um, I think it needs to be, we see improvement. We've done a good job. We think we've got this rollout down. Let's hammer at it a few more times. Just remind this is good. This is good. Let's keep doing this and then move on, mix it up, but keep it short. Um, like I just, I don't think that if, I think if you go back like, I think more important than me listening to the VOD review, you go back and listen to your VOD review. That full hour VOD review. Make yourself listen through it at one, you know what? Not even 1.25. Legitimately just play it at normal speed. Make yourself listen to it. And think about how much of that fat 
could you trim? And actually f- saying it's fat is not even like really f- uh, fair. How much of that muscle is not necessary? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, even if it's good information, how much of it is, is not necessary or not the most important thing? Right. I think that would be something that I would try and do. I think listening to yourself, coach, is one of the best things that you can do. I do it literally on like almost a daily basis when I go back and I, I always go back and listen. To, I do my own editing, you know? So I go back and I listen to my stream and I catch so many times where I, I talk for too much or I monologue or I didn't explain something well. That's probably something you'd benefit from, right? So. Why do you think that this was remembered so well? <laughs> it's at the very beginning. Right. It's at the very beginning and it was a very clear direction, right? It was like, we need this offing. That's it. But, but if you held me at gunpoint, I could not tell you what the first two or three minutes of your VOD review had. And I listened to it. I, I can't remember. It was something about like moving back and forth or giving space and then pushing depending on if we had advantage, I think, but I, I don't remember. I did remember this though, you know, there's a reason behind that, you know? And so yeah. if you've got something that's really important, like if you think that push pull or whatever it was that you talked about was at the very start of the Vaudry was important, then you need to emphasize that more. You need to give an example of that. And then you need to stop obfuscating that with other details that aren't as important. Okay, so go back just a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. All right. So... Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing until the fight like actually starts. Okay, pause. So how would you coach this? And obviously this is why like prep matters because you might need like 30 seconds of thinking, <laughs> you know, to like figure yeah. it out. But like you prep, you prepare the VOD review and then you deliver it. So give, give yourself some time if you need it and then deliver it in 45 seconds or so. So I would say we need to understand where they're coming from because we're really used to them people taking the fight right here. Yeah. Uh, in this case, they're gonna try to rush the bot. They're gonna they're not gonna wait for the corner. So we need to scout this first of all, and yeah. the scout will probably come from the Lucio because nobody else can do it. And uh, once we recognize that they're coming from here, then we have to we have to understand the concave is now has to be around the bot left right this way. Sure. Plus high ground, so we have to take high ground. And uh, this guy's probably a little far, but um, uh, you can like you can put a turret here. But this guy's probably a little too far. You want to be within effective range. But, so we definitely want a high ground both sides of this, maybe one guy on this side, so that when they come out here, they're looking at three different angles, and when we we stack our our tank on close to this side, and uh, or like, or maybe not there, maybe close here, yeah. and time. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's it. To me, it, to me, it's as simple as like, all right, guys, we just need to do a better job scouting like where they're rotating from, and then try and set up off angles around that. Here's a couple of ideas. All right, next fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because this this guy's this guy's setting up for this fight, right? But By the way. This is it. Yep. This is another example where if you're not 100% sure how to set up the off angles here, and I'm not 100% sure either, like there's some ideas, but I don't think there's anything concrete. Open, open up the floor. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. See what your Torbjorn thinks, see what your Surgeon thinks, see what your Arisa thinks, you know, or whatever, and see if they come up with any ideas. Because they might prefer an off angle, and if, they, if they're the one that presents it, or they come up with it, they'll not only have more buy-in on it, but more importantly, they'll remember it better because they were the one that suggested it. You kind of see what I'm saying? um yeah but yeah that was good all right let's keep going let's do one or two more still not terrible but like i, I prefer no, getting yeah. both kinds of butts yeah yeah and this is also where you can save time because you don't we don't need to watch this okay if our goal is pre-fight positioning and setting up off angles we don't care about how like the ults were used you know what i'm saying yes that, that would be a different review <clears throat> okay so we got a respawn we got some ults how are we going to use this so we're already coming out uh, we're already coming out one, two, three, so this is good. Yep. We can't rush down the same angle. And then I will say again that the, the Mon's just being a little scared. I mean, he's he's backing out this, but he can also just hide in here, right? He's I think he's playing a little too scared. Okay. Um, of, of, I mean, this is three maps in, so he's like, oh wow, this guy's good. Yeah. Uh, but we need to not be so scared of this guy, because this this setup doesn't feel bad. Yeah, it doesn't feel too bad, but I think we're not being assertive enough because this is the this is the important side to clear out, and he can definitely get in there because right. we have this side and we have the tank pinching, and I think he's he's giving this guy a lot like a little too much respect. Okay, he's uh, it's been a sure it's been a couple fights. And, yeah, sure. Yeah, they just walk in your torp, and that and that was it. That was a super easy one too, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe you could consider like how your surgeon rolls out as well. Like maybe rolling out that far is not good, but like stack with your wrist and swing wide. But like see where your Kiriko is, like behind your Kiriko there. That's how we do the rotate clearing because it feels like there's more cover that rotation. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. We, we just we, we need to get these people in on the action yeah. sooner because a couple of fights are just like they're doing the right thing, but they're just sitting on it. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Okay, yeah. next fight. This, this guy needs to move too. He, he didn't realize that. Yeah, if he gets two v ones, he needs to give up the angle. Uh, wait. What happened here? It's more of like a long brawl out phase. Yeah. Oh, okay. Next fight. 
Uh, so we have bot middle, so I would say, I think we have some people come back for spawn is the issue. Because what yeah. I've been telling them for this is when the bot is here, we need the high ground, right? We need yeah. train, yeah. and we need this. So that we box off this side, they have to give this way. Yep. Uh, we're not doing that right now, but I think it's because we lost some people. I think so too, yeah, your loose is in spawn. Uh, we, yeah, we still have, so, like, we just need... There are also lost in spawn people. too, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, we have no Hey, you're getting Torben high, you got your Torben high. Oh, your yeah, so this, guy's, this guy's already going, which is yeah. good. Your surgeon just gets railed. Like I, I think this is where this is like a great example of where you can this is where you can kind of use like the mental expectations for your team that we talked about at the start where it's like guys this is fine we just got reeled nice go next yeah. you know what I'm saying like we're doing we're, we're setting up the right the right angles and we're trying to get our people back like this is okay yeah but we just got reeled just that's it yeah exactly exactly and like that that like just repeating that kind of mentality over and over again builds up like a little bit of mental resilience because they know that you're not going to get irritated if they do the right thing and it just doesn't work out they'll start to be like yeah i mean it's okay guys you know and like that's that's like the ultimate power when you start to hear your players that really like understand what you're saying so yeah next fight that's it <clears throat> go next uh do we still play this one out? I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, yeah. right? Exactly. That that's that's the key thing, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <clears throat> All right. So we give. So how do we set up this fight? Uh, well, we talk about high ground and then this side. So mm -hmm. this room. Right. I was talking about. I put in terms of brackets, left, right brackets. So we have high yeah. ground. We have the people on the side. Okay. Uh, so let's see how we set this up. Tanks going left already, which is good. Mm -hmm. We have high ground control. Mm -hmm. I would like our torp to be moving left a little bit quicker because you have to realize that uh, you're not going to do anything here at this range. You want right. to get here, drop a turret, hundred percent, or drop a turret even here, and then start like you know just flip this thing yeah, over here. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Right, the turret's not mobile. Oh. Uh, again, a little. Okay, no, he's fighting a tracer. This is fine. Yep. Uh, I would like the to torp to be a little more assertive because he's way out yep. of range at this point. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. I think the setup for everybody else looks good. It's just your torp needs to rotate through. Because Torb needs to be putting pressure from that off angle. That's got that's a great room to control as well for like you said with the Torb. That being said, good use of Sojourn positioning of your so is good as well. Next fight. Yep, and then we clear out the wide angle, which we, we know is important. We can't run down main without clearing out the wide mm -hmm. angle. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna be on attack here. Bot's moving. Let's see what happens. Yep. So where are they gonna take it from? Are they gonna go through window again, or are they gonna go through corner? We're the, thinking they're going through corner. So we're fine, we're so. we're scouting better here too. You notice that? Yeah. So we're thinking they're going to go through corners, so we're sending the soldier wide, which is good. This guy, he's contesting the tracer backside, so I think this is not yeah, terrible. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, but we definitely need to get the, the wide side if, if mm -hmm. they're fighting corner. Uh, maybe Spidey could be with him on here? Yeah. Uh, I, I tell him to play a little bit more in the middle, because if, if he has to flip and, and help that's this true. guy up... He's but that's where it comes to the scouting, you know? Yeah. Like, if he, he, can, he can react, we just need to know where they're coming from. Okay. Then he does react. We give up the off angle because they push that one, but our Torb has a good angle. Yeah, I mean, again, here, mechanics, right? Like, th this this looks good. This this looks like a very reasonable setup. You know what I'm saying? And I think also this is where, like, you could be very nitpicky about, like, some of the micro here. Like, okay, well, we needed it to be a little bit better in the corner here. I think this off angle could have been a little bit sooner. But again, don't let perfect be the enemy of good this is better than uh, some of your previous fights let's attack the bad fights and let the good setups like these go you know what i'm saying even though this isn't perfect it's good enough for what you want from the team you know what i'm saying yeah. um so I started, just... getting, I started getting worried because this is the third map and by the time they got to like the fifth map like it, it was going to hell because they were just tilted like right man we're doing the right things and we're getting railed and like i was, I was right. trying to remind them like hey man with this is we're practicing resilience. Keep doing the right things. You're doing fine. Like, <sighs> the, the mechanics. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But like yeah, we got to like Kings World at the end, and they were just rushing in as. Yeah. As yeah. Yeah. So it, it it happens, and that's where like obviously like having the greatest strategic coaching in the world is is is, is not going to fix you know tilt or frustration or bad days or bad maps. It happens.